Ve'uzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Atiyallah, atiyar Rasulü ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul haji sudaifa wa miskeen, zor and jahad. And for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. And alhamdulillah that we took a path in which to be nothing and that Allah's rahmah and mercy inshaAllah to be dressing us in this holy month of Jumad al Awwal and the fifth of Jumad al Awwal, the holy birth of Sidna Zainab salam, the daughter of Imam Ali salam and Sidna Fatima Tazari salam and the granddaughter of Sayyidina Muhammad and the immensity of her soul and the immensity of the gift that she laid for her, her, her humanity. And we talked briefly the night before of those whom laid a foundation for us and what we don't meditate and contemplate that had they not fought for Islam and had they allowed people to destroy Islam and deviate from Islam and destroy the foundation of Islam, what we would have had today would have been nothing, nothing of its reality. That those whom laid their life to fight, to be remembered and to lay down the usul and the principles of Islam, they are like the pillars. And any structure without a pillar collapses and Allah has destroyed many civilizations before us. The only religion on this earth now and its true religion is the religion of Allah which is Islam and the way of submission. And those whom submit themselves to the Lord Almighty they are Muslim. Those whom submit their will to the will of Allah will of God Almighty is the only religion for God is the submission of one's will and those who came before us because of their fight, because of their struggle, because of their willingness to die for what they believed in, they, they left the history and the precedent of its reality. And had they not struggled and had they not suffered and had they not stood up for oppression and incorrect belief and incorrect understanding. What we would have had today is nothing of the reality that we have. It would have been fragmented and destroyed and we would have been looking for, for eggs from a bunny. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we would have been putting uh, idolatrous gifts under trees and Allah has preserved us from this deceit and deceitful practices because of their suffering. That His love for Prophet the Divinely love for the prophetic reality, the Divinely love for those whom loved the prophetic reality and that they gave their lives for that reality, Allah keeps the religion pure and purified. Because a reward for their suffering, a reward for their, their gift for what they believed in, because their belief and their self-sacrifice Allah kept it to be pure and clean and brought to those whom we are living now. What we have of Islam is because of their suffering. Those whom want to make a choice and say, I want to take off my hijab, they didn't have that choice. Sitna Zainab Sitna Sakina and the ladies of the household and the battles of Karbala and the, the battles of Ashura and the events of that, 
their, their Islam was being ripped from them. As they were screaming and crying and shouting, they had no choice. They didn't have the luxury to say, you know, I can pick and choose what I want to do from this Islam. They laid a foundation and they stood by it and they screamed and shouted and cried as a result of it. They died from heartbreak and suffering so that we can get to a point in our lives now where we can with ease pick and choose that, uh, I think I'll follow this and I think I won't follow that and I'll pick and choose like it's a, a deli and a buffet that I'll put some jello on my plate and maybe a sandwich. But that's not what they suffered for. They suffered for us to be able to have that religion and to observe that religion and to, to sanctify it. And that's the greatest gift that they gave to us that when people want to do something think of how much our predecessors suffered for us to have the religion that we have today. How many battles they fought against shayateen and shaitans and as a result we uphold the sunnah and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad as an immense honour and an immense gift that was given to us. It was sanctified and kept to be pure and brought to us like a crown that so many suffered and died so that it would never fall to the ground. And as a result of bringing that then the next one in the marathon is supposed to take the holy sunnah and put upon themselves and continue their fight and go forward onto the day of judgment. Not so that it was handed to us to put down, not that it was handed to us to put aside because then the marathon ends and the religion ends and the race ends. Means them who came before us and these souls who came before us, their isharat and guidance into our heart that no matter how difficult you think your life is, you continue, you uphold the way, you struggle your best to keep the way of Allah to be sanctified, to keep the way of Prophet to be sanctified and purified. And this is their message for us, this is their example for us. That we suffered to keep this religion, we suffered to bring you what you have today. At least you can also appreciate what was given and with an honour we keep it, with an honour we try to be exemplars of the faith, an example of the faith, an example of the way. Not because it was supposed to be easy but it was supposed to be hard. And Allah is about the victory, means our victory is in the struggle. Only Allah, Allah knows what the true victory is for the believer, not a goal that they think they can attain or a goal or a money or a finance or something. But Allah wanted from us the good fight, the good struggle, struggle in your deen, struggle in your way, struggle in your life to uphold what is right and you know what is wrong to uphold the truth and every cleanliness and every goodness in the face of every darkness and in every difficulty. We pray that in these days Allah inspire us towards this goodness, inspire us at least to remember these holy souls that I'm struggling with my faith, I'm struggling with my practices, I'm struggling with everything in my life by means of all that you suffered and all that you gave in the way of Allah grant me this nazar and this gift of faith. For if these souls should take a liking to you and have a love for you, every inspiration comes into your heart by their nazar. Every barakah and blessing comes towards the heart and souls of those whom love them because the hadith of Prophet that you be with whom you love. And an understanding of whom you love will always be with you, love never leaves you to be alone. So then who to love when the heart is the most powerful organ that Allah has given to us, don't give the heart to anything other than La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah The heart that Allah gave to us is for the love of the Divine the Presence, love of the prophetic reality. And as a result if we put that love and that power and that reality within the heart, the heart will be our guide. 
the magnet of the heart with that love and with that ishq would direct itself to the reality of Allah's Divinely Kingdom and the lights and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the example of what Allah expects from us on this earth of good character, of nobility, of chivalry, of, 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 of the ishq and love and muhabbat from the Divinely Presence. And the heart is the most powerful organ that filled with love like a ship on a magnetic compass that will direct itself towards that reality. For if the heart becomes corrupt there's no faith, there's nothing that the person can do. Faith is not within the head, faith is not in something of reasoning and understanding, faith is within the heart of the believer like love. Love is not in the head, there's no logical understanding. Love is either you have it or you don't and love is a gift from Allah's Divinely Presence. Those whom He bestows a love and Divinely love within their heart, He's giving them the seeds and the gift of faith because only they understand in their heart with that love, with this Divinely yearning that those are the seeds of faith. And that that love can, can blossom and become infinitely powerful and that these understandings and these realities have nothing to do with the head. The head is actually to be negated in this spiritual process. Allah gave to us a reality of our soul and gave us a reality of what we call our ego and our nafs. The nafs resides within the head and the soul resides within the heart. Don't think that Allah gave these organs and that it wasn't a test. Allah could have made us like the birds in which to have no head but an immense heart. And had He given us that favour we could have flown like the birds. We said before that every other creation whom Allah loves His creation, He reduced their <coughs> mental capacity but increased the love within their heart. And those creatures can perform miracles. And the creature that He loves so dearly of humans, He gave them a big head and a moderately sized heart. But unfortunately they use their head and not their heart. And this Divine gift that Allah gave to us and the challenge of our coming onto this earth is, don't use your head to reach Me. I gave you a head and it's going to play with you. And your nafs and your ego and your egoism resides within your head and your head is a great deceit for you. Your head is going to tell you all your coordinates yet look at it as a piece of flesh behind a closet, a, a very hard bone. And that piece of flesh has seen nothing but yet it tells you everything you see. That piece of flesh your brain has heard nothing but yet it tells you everything you hear. That piece of flesh tells you what you feel and yet it's felt nothing. The great deceit and the trick that Allah gave to us or the test in which Allah gave to us is, I gave you two organs. Which one are you going to use to reach to Me? If you should choose your head, know that it's a deception. Shaitan is the one who uses the head. The Messiah that they think is coming is going to use the head. Every deception on this earth of Dajjal is going to use the head because it's a faculty in which they have access to. The head is, is the device that can be cast into. You know like when you want to cast something on an open platform, anyone with a phone can cast onto that TV because it's not encrypted. You could be watching a show and the guy next to you his phone is casting and then supersedes your show and begins to put what he wants to watch on TV. It's not encrypted. The head is, is meant to be a, a, a device of deception upon this earth. They see but yet they, they have eyes but yet they don't see Allah describes. They have ears but they don't hear because they're only using the physical ears that was associated with their brain. And they think they heard, oh they heard everything. They, they think they saw but they saw everything. And everything that the brain is giving to them of their senses, they think that is it. 
in which Allah said, no this is your greatest deception, this is from your ego. And if you understood the path and you understood your spirituality, you should have activated your heart. Because Qalbil Mu'min Baytullah, the house of the, of the believer, the house of Allah the house of the Divine is the heart of the believer. And if they activate their heart it has an infinite capacity of knowledges and realities. If they activate their heart is the house in which God Almighty resides. Means what, what does that mean that Allah resides within the heart of the believer? Means Allah defines in Hadith al-Qudsi that when you did your, your mandatory worshipness and you came to me through voluntary, because voluntary is a sign and a code for love. When Allah says, you prayed the prayers I asked you to pray, you say, yes, now I'm coming for zikr and bringing some food. That's a sign of love and as a result of doing from love Allah's promise, I become the eyes in which you see. But that's not in the head, this is the eyes within the heart, Ahlul Basira, they don't see through their eyes of their head. When they close their physical eyes Allah lets them to see through their soul. More powerful than what's this game we were playing with? Oculus. Oculus. We put it on, we're astonished that it's completely blacked out, but their coding can let you see through the, this device. And that's a sign for somebody to think that I can actually see with something on my eyes. Allah says, You haven't seen anything yet. Close those eyes and let me show you your world around you because it's a hadith. You'll see with my seeing, means I'll activate your soul to see. Not the illusion of your physical eyes that plays a tricks on you. You'll hear what I want you to hear from your soul, mean Allah's Divinely hearing will dress the servant, Allah's Divinely seeing will dress the servant, Allah's Divinely breath and qudra and powers will dress the servant. All of that holy hadith is a description of what Allah want to give to the servant who opens their soul and opens their heart. And that the house of God that resides within them, every ayatul kareem of the Kaaba is a reference to the heart. Every washing of the Kaaba is to wash the heart, keep your heart to be clean, do your zikr, your chanting and your meditation within your heart, circumambulate the heart. Now even the animals are showing us on every type of social media, circumambulate. Oh mankind don't run around this and don't run around that, don't fall for the illusion of your mind but circumambulate and circle. Why when you start to circle? Because Allah will be the focus of your existence. Once you begin to circumambulate yourself and your identity and your reality, you realize there's so much more than what I see and what I hear. And my, my, my limited capacity of understanding based on books I read, my limited capacity based on what I think I've heard, what I've seen. When Allah says, circumambulate, circumambulate your heart, bring your worship to me, your focus to me and I open up your infinite capacity and infinite possibilities in which the soul has no limit on what it can hear because Allah has no limit. They can hear into the seven heavens and above the seven heavens, they can see into the seven heavens and above the seven heavens faster than the speed of thought Allah can open for them to see something. They can feel beyond the seven heavens, beyond this earth. Their entire soul can enter into a presence, they can hear, feel and, and see that reality. And Allah says, all of that you give that up just for the illusion of playing with your brain in which it understands nothing and the, and the capacity is so limited in its understanding. Means that Allah created us with this gift, gave us this choice. That you want to use the head or you want to use your heart. And those whom understood they come to tariqahs and the first zikr that they gave to them, La ilaha illallah, La means no, no comes to your head then to your right and illallah into your heart. 
in which Prophet is describing for them, negate your head and come with your heart to Allah. Your, your head is but an illusion and the tariqah is based on negate your head. This head of yours has shown you nothing but deceit. Whatever you think you know, you still don't know because it's all based on deception. The knowing of something false has no benefit to the knowing of something that's true, something in the world of light that is eternal. What means of truth and what is truth? Truth is eternity. Truth is from the world of light that has no time and false means anything from this dunya. Anything from the world of time because Allah described falsehood as something perishing. Truth never perishes. The world of light there's no more perishing, there's no disposed by date. Everything perishing is the material world and Allah is, is teaching for us, go to the truth, seek that which is eternal. <clears throat> never perishes. If your life is composed of knowledges of falsehood because it's false because it's perishing, no matter how much it is. So you make your, your brain a, a, a library of falsehood, why Allah gave to us in this world Alzheimer? What's dementia and Alzheimer's? They, they spent their whole life trying to think trying to memorize, trying to understand. They put the faculty of all their energy into their head and Allah's gift for them at the end of their life is, I flip the switch off your head, it's enough for you. And as a result they can't remember anything in their head because the energy that they were continuously activating was in the head. The knowledges they were trying to deposit within the head. They're trying to pull out the reality within the knowledges of the head and Allah says, as much as you acquire from that head you take none of that into your eternity. That it has no value into your eternal soul and your eternal journey. Your soul in which has no time, if timelessness is defined in a linear equation where timeless means there's no beginning and there's no end. Time and this material world is like a dot. And Allah say, you're going to spend your time on a dot versus this whole line of eternity in which there's no beginning and no end in its realities. Leave the dot, it meant absolutely nothing and seek that which is eternal. And those whom they activate their heart, activate the reality of the heart, they understood Allah actually gave us a head to turn it off. As a result of turning it off and training, La ilaha illallah, turn your head off, turn your head off, turn your head off, activate your heart. As soon as they activate their heart then they understood that when Allah activates their heart, He begins to send the light from their heart onto their face and their head. And their head then acts as its true representation. The head should be representing the Divinely Presence within the heart of the believer, not the head that represents shaitan and falsehood. If they don't come to their purification, they don't come to that understanding if they don't activate the heart then what happens? Their knowledge is satanic, its foundation is based on shaitan because they never activated the heart. So then you go to academia and you pay hundred thousand dollars for their knowledge to make you satanic empire and after you pay your hundred thousand dollars you were taught by people who have no belief in their heart, they activated nothing in their heart. And their whole uloom and knowledges is to glorify Satan and to disprove the Divinely Presence. So then that was the, the trick that Allah, this was the, the test that Allah gave, don't fall for this trick of shaitan. That the head I gave to you, you have to have a correct way of using it. First negate it for me, don't use your head to think of me. Open your heart for my house is in your heart. 
approach every home through the correct door. So then when we activate the heart, we do the zikr within the heart, we bring the love and compassion and good character resides within the heart of the believer. As soon as they begin to activate this Divine love within their heart, they negated their head. Now Allah will then make the head to be the khalifa of the heart. So now you'll inherit what my Prophets inherit, inherited. Why? The Prophets were the khalifas of Allah because Allah resides within their heart and their entire head was for Divinely Presence. As a result their ears were for Allah, their eyes were for Allah and Allah granted their speech to be for Allah as a guidance towards mankind. But now in dunya everyone uses their head with nothing in their heart means then your head is for shaitan and your orator for shaitan and you propagate satanic understanding. And what awliya wanted from us and came into our lives and inspired, bring God within your heart. If your heart is illuminated with the light of Allah Allah will make your head to be the khalifa. That Allah will illuminate your head to represent His Divinely Presence within the heart. And that's why the Hadith Al-Qudsi is describing my khalifa. Allah is granting to be a khalifa of Divinely Presence that now when you activated your heart and you shut off your head, I turn your head back on in which your ears are my hearing and your eyes are my seeing. Your breath is my breath means you have a qudra, you ask and Allah is describing they have power of kun fayakun. That they ask and Allah makes it to manifest because the khalifa of the Divinely Presence has been activated. Means those whom open their heart then Allah opens their head. Those whom negate their head and direct themselves towards the heart so that they can reach to Allah's Divinely Truths and leave every type of falsehood that's perishing. In a time of deceit, imagine the deceit and deception of Dajjal, it comes strong upon the head. People will see and think that they truly seeing, I see them, they're lifting the dead from the graves. I heard this, I'm, I'm hearing this because this is the time of deception. Not the deception of the heart, the heart is not deceived, a heart filled with Allah is not deceived. The heart filled with Allah closes its eyes from this game and this illusion and immediately is warned by Allah this is a magician, close your eyes to his tricks. But those whom are living their life from their head they're gonna swear by it, I saw him lift the dead, Yo, this is what Prophet described. You better believe he's going to bring the dead to talk and everything's going to happen and all their senses are going to be under the control of shaitan. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us and protect us and open our heart and that Allah make our heads to be the khalifa of Divine the Presence in which Allah reside within our hearing, within our seeing, within our speech, within our breath, within our hands and our feet and our entire being. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifu. والسلام على المرسلين محمد الله رب العالمين بحرمة محمد المصطفى وبسير سورة الفاتحة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five bands, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.